This is I'm Stuck, and in this video, we will be learning about Stalin's actions in Eastern Europe from the years 1945 to 1948. So to learn all about these different countries, we'll need to understand Stalin's motivations and his desire for power and a defensive system to protect the USSR. And after the percentage agreement, which Stalin made with Winston Churchill, which uh, stated how much influence uh, each country would have over these Eastern European states, Stalin believed that the states that the USSR had liberated from Nazi rule would belong to a Soviet sphere of influence. Now this influence was Stalin's main priority, how he also needed to defend the Soviet Union. Because of course after World War II, where the USSR had lost so many men, um, it was vital for them to be able to defend themselves. And in order to do this, he wanted to create a buffer zone. And this buffer zone was to be made of many satellite states. Now a satellite state is an independent country under heavy economic, political and military control from another country. So this uh, economic, political and military control would come from the USSR. And by 1948, at the end of all of this, Stalin had created pro-Soviet communist regimes in Poland, Hungary, Bulgaria, Romania, Albania and Czechoslovakia. And this meant that the Soviets were much stronger to defend against any threat from the West. However, these methods of enforcing his pro-Soviet communist regimes were not the nicest. They were manipulative and intimidating. And we will learn all about them throughout this video. However, some of them included forming alliances with left-wing parties before taking control of them. He would intimidate opposition candidates and tamper with election results to ensure a communist victory. Now, this wasn't really part of the three elections um, which was agreed at the Yalta conference. Now, in many ways, the communists were the largest party. However, you do have to remember that after World War II, there were many countries in Eastern Europe who were extremely poor and they looked towards um, communism as a way to solve these economic problems and the mass unemployment in, uh, in, in the country. However, many people also supported the pro-agrarian parties, which offered many solutions to the farming communities. And of course, in these poor um, regions, there were many farming communities. It was extremely common. Now, Stalin also didn't just want these countries to become communist. They had to become Stalinist. They had to become these Stalinist puppets. This meant that Stalin's ideology of communism existed that the countries could not be independent of the Soviet influence and they had to be loyal to Moscow. And this would eventually give uh, the Soviet Union power, which would in turn give the Soviet security. So the first country we will learn about is Poland. And this was something in which Stalin planned his influence in advance by creating the Lublin government whilst the Polish government took exile in uh, London. And the Lublin government were basically a communist government which relied on the Soviet Union. And by agreeing to free elections at Yalta, which we now know Stalin didn't really keep to, um, the role of the Lublin government was preserved within Poland. However, in June 1945, the Provisional Government of National Unity was formed by a mixture of communists and other political groups like the Peasant Party, led by Stanislaw Mikolajic. This government was recognised by the US, the UK and many other allies, so in general it looked as if it was a decent solution. However, Stalin didn't really give any of the other parties any real power, and in these free elections, he would ensure that he would get the result that he wanted. So in order to weaken the peasant party, which were the ever popular party, um, as well as the communists, the communists and the socialists merged together to form the Polish United Workers Party. Now the communists were the dominant um, group within this sector, 
and therefore in the rigged elections of January 1947, the communists came out victors. Now, the only problem for the Soviets now was that many of the communists were not fully pro-Moscow. And one of these examples is Gamolka, and he was a communist and the deputy prime minister of Poland. Um, and he, is de de he attempted to defeat um, any opposition to communism, and he supported the rigged elections in 1947. So in turn, that looks like he's a decent person for Stalin to have. However, he believed that the Poles should be able to determine their own future um, and he, he opposed all the Soviet um, policies despite the fact that he was a communist. So this meant that in 1948 he was accused of national deviation and he was replaced with a pro-Stalinist Boleslaw Beirut. Now this was a, a way in which that Stalin clearly didn't just want people to be communist, they had to be a Stalinist. And this was brutal in a way that he took over Poland and made Poland extremely reliant on the Soviet Union. The next country we will look at will be Romania. And this was a less difficult challenge for the Soviets than other country. Already at the percentages agreement, Soviets had been um, entrusted with 90% of the influence over the country and many people in Romania already wanted a communist regime as a change to the pre-war regime. Now another reason why it was a lot easier was because the Red Army occupied Romania at the time, which kind of meant that if you have all the Red Army in your country, you have very little choice of what you really want. So this meant that Stalin faced minimal opposition and he was able to set up his Stalinist regime in Romania. Another place that he managed to set up his Stalinist regime was in Bulgaria. And in this, he used this um, a selection of manipulated elections as we saw in Poland and also the removal of opposition. And this ended up to be extremely successful. Now the largest political opponent was the Agrarian Party and this was led by Nikola Petkov. Um, in fact, in the October elections, the Agrarian Party won 20% of the votes. So this meant that Stalin ended up falsifying accounts and Petkov was faced with false accusations that, and he was eventually executed. Now this meant that the Agrarian Party was absorbed into the Bulgarian communist movement. Now, by April 1947, all other opposition had been banned, and this led the communists as the sole political party. Now, this was done extremely gradually, and this was one of Stalin's main tactics, um, because it didn't cause too many problems, and it, it wasn't likely to start any more fighting between the powers. But again, extremely successful, but going against any um, bring of any free elections. So the, another place we've got even more places and this is Hungary and in Hungary Stalin used the tactics of allying with other political groups and this was going to oppose the main threat of the small holders party which was the next big party and he also used tactics such as arresting political opponents and rigging elections um, and this meant that the communists were able to take control of the country. However again like Poland, many of the communists didn't show enough loyalty to Stalin despite the fact that they were um, the, the communist. And in fact, they ended up forming close links with Yugoslavia, which we'll learn about later, where there was a non-Soviet regime in place. So this meant that the Hungarian communist leader Laszlo Roak was executed in 1949 for any these anti-Soviet um, actions. And all the political opposition to Moscow-backed Hungarian communists was eliminated. So another thing very similar to what we've seen before in Poland and Bulgaria. Now, Czechoslovakia was again quite similar because after the war, the communists were fairly popular in Czechoslovakia, especially with the rural peasants. So this meant that the Czech Communist Party leader, Clement Gottwald, became the prime minister. However, by 1948, Czechoslovakia was extremely poor, and in Stalin's determination to keep Czechoslovakia under his influence, they were not allowed to have economic aid from the US in the Marshall Plan, which you will learn about in a later video. 
Now this meant that there started to be growing opposition from non-communist groups. And in order to gain control, Moscow encouraged demonstrations throughout Prague's and the non-communists in the government resumed, uh, resigned soon after. Now, in order to present, uh, prevent a civil war, Edward ben, uh, Benes, who was the president of Sh uh, Czechoslovakia, succumbed to the communist pressure and he allowed Gottwald to form a new government with close ties to Moscow. Um, and Benes um, resigned in June 1948. Now, the communists quickly moved to consolidate their power as they arrested many people, fired people from jobs, and important figures like the foreign minister was found dead in suspicious circumstances, probably likely that he was killed. So the one place which was a little bit different to all of these was Yugoslavia, and Yugoslavia was the one area in Eastern Europe in which Stalin was unable to achieve complete control of it. And this was mainly because of the man in control, and this man was Tito. Now, although he was one of the founder members of Cominform in 1948, it was clear that the Soviet had limited influence on, in Yugoslavia, despite the fact that they were communists. Now, Stalin failed to gain this influence for many reasons. Now, one of the main reasons was that Stalin was determined to enforce Soviet economic and foreign policies over these Eastern European states, and Tito did not want to be a Stalinist puppet. Now, Yugoslavia were also not liberated by the Red Army in World War II, which meant that they were not under any military pressure to follow all Soviet orders. Of course, it's a lot easier to be um, a away from Soviet um, orders if you aren't, don't have their army in your country. Now, this meant that in, 19, in 1948, in June, uh, Yugoslavia were expelled from common form. However, they were simply able to survive because of the economic aid they gained from the US. Um, and this was basically just US saying, that despite the fact that they were communists, they would give them aid because they were an enemy of uh, the USSR. And Stalin was an enemy because he fell out with Tito as well, as Tito always went up against Stalin. Like he, for example, he helped out the Greek communists and he tried to organize Bulgaria, Albania and Yugoslavia in the land of the South Slavs, even though Stalin didn't want this. So this was the only example in Eastern Europe where they were unable to achieve this Stalinist government. So thank you for watching this video and uh, next we will be talking all about a uh, Marshall Plan coming up and a lot more about what happened in Europe. So thank you and see you soon. Bye.